trying to see who pistol thumping bullets light up the dark. Every time my body drop, it look like pieces of art. And with this chopper, paint the block up, nigga, call me Bob Ross. Hey, I'm who they want to be, or maybe the old me. New and me just ride the beat, boy, Jay got the best of me. Heard a few. Yeah, so man, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy Curtis Cash here, back with another video, man. Today we here with the Bulls news, man. I told y'all I'd try to keep y'all up to date with that, man. I don't just do the music reactions and everything like that. I still be on, you know, the sports shit, you know, mainly with my Bulls, man. I, I gotta keep y'all up to date, bro. Um, today we're gonna be talking about, you know, the Dan Craig, because they looking like Dan Craig is gonna be the highest. He's looking like the guy, you know, they, they, I'm, I'm going to read some more to y'all, you know, let y'all know what they saying about that. But for the most part, it's looking like Dan Craig might be the guy. So I'm not sure. Also, I'm going to be talking about Mike D'Antoni because you see that Mike D'Antoni did not take his contract extension with the Rockets. I mean, if I was him, I wouldn't take that either. I don't want to be stuck in that situation for a couple more years. You see the situation they in? But we're going to talk about that when we get to Mike D'Antoni, man. We're going to talk about that when we get to him. Also, um, it was something about Zach Levine, and they possibly thinking about training Zach Levine. So, um, it's an article up that I got with possible trade packages to the Nets. You know, because that was the main thing. The Nets are trying to get him. Um, so, we're going to get to all that. Right now, we're going to start with Dan Craig. Um, you see what the article says. Chicago Bulls, Dan Craig picking up steam as head coach. I mean, and coach candidate, bruh. Um, I'm not gonna read all of it. The link will be in the description. So if you want to go look at the article yourself, it'll be in order. Everyone will be in order of which one it will be. Um, so basically, it's supposed to be like you know they saying possible big time head. Oh my God, why can't I talk today? A possibly big time head coaching candidate for the Bulls to replace Jim Boyle could be Miami Heat assistant. Dan Craig. And you know, for real, for real, they can still interview him, but I don't think they can hire him right away until, you know, the season's over for the Miami Heat and shit. So, they can't really do that just yet. Um, we already heard about, like, who all the main ones. You know, they got Kenny Atkinson, they got Wes Unsell Jr. and all that. But it's looking like, you know, Dan Craig might be the one for show. Um, let's see, let's see. One of the latest head coaching candidates that could be picking up steam with the Chicago Bulls search is Miami Heat longtime staffer assistant coach Dan Craig. The Bulls are looking all over the place and it seems to find quality list of candidates to get a, their next head coach hired right. Right? Look, man, take y'all time, man. We need to do this right, man. We need to we need to start and do everything right, man. Y'all, y'all fire people in the front office, right? Y'all doing good. We got the fourth pick. You know, that if it was any time, it was time for the Bulls to turn it around. If it was any time, bro, any time, this is the best opportunity. We had the seventh pick three years in a row. Now we got the fourth pick. We had an interesting situation, bro. There's so many players we can get at number four, right? Then we fired that trash-ass head coach we had who didn't even get along with our players, don't even know why he was there. They said the players got along more with the assistant coach than they did with him. So, man, we're in an interesting spot. We need, the, I won't even say the perfect coach, but we need a good coach for a young team, right? And this drive, we need the right player. But, I mean, I'm going to look into more of the drive later on because they keep talking about trading down and all that. Uh, no, dude, please don't trade down. We got we got, we got plenty of options at number four. What's the point of trading down? We're young, bro. Unless you're going to get some type of other piece for the for the trade like come on we gotta see man let's see what else this is saying um Boylan finished up his two-year run 39 and 84 trash as hell glad we got rid of him. I was, i've been saying it but uh they said but craig is one head coaching candidate that brought a good amount of intrigue both to the bulls fan base like i said it could be kenny Atkinson or dan craig i'm with it i'm with it I'm, I'm, I'm rocking with the Dan Craig situation. Um, possibly even with the Mike Dan Tony situation. But hold up. Let me finish up with Dan Craig and we'll get right to that, man. Let's see. Uh, here's more. I had to say on Dan Craig, Coach Cannon. Okay, okay. Um, I think he checked the boxes in a sense of being a good relationship. I mean, good relationship guy being 
a great mind in terms of understanding the game and also having a hardworking mentality. You can just tell in his background the way he had to fight for everything going to the league was personality, what his personality is about. I think he would bring that as a coach. He was with the Heat. There, oh, it's right there. He was with the Heat for 17 years and he wasn't even the head coach, bro. He was just, he was on the staff, a video intern. And he worked his way all the way up to be an assistant coach, bro. So if that don't say nothing about him being a hard worker, like he, like they just said, if that don't say nothing about Dan Craig being a hard worker and being a long-term type of guy, bro, like, bro, I don't know what else that, that say, bro. Like, that, that most likely can be the coach for us. The Heat have been a good team, if not great, but they, you know, not great all the season, but they've been a good team. Like, right now, they're a great team. Great situation. Young players and everything. So he's coming from a young player process with the addition of Jimmy Butler. But there's a lot of young players over there, right? And they all turning out to be great. Tyler Hero, bam, all that. Bam came in a world prospect. And bam is a good ass player right now. The Miami team is a great ass team to watch, bro. Like I said, man, that's why I made that video. That's why I made that video man, months back about the Miami Heat, bro. I had already saw something special with the Miami Heat, bro. But um, like I said, I think this is the end of the article for that. If y'all still want to read like the rest of it, we need to get rid of him too. Um, but if we, if you want to see the rest of the article, I will put the link in the description for y'all so y'all go check it out yourselves. Um, like I said, every article will be down there, so you can go check it out yourself if you want to read all of it. I'm not gonna read everything here. Um, let's move on to the Mike Dan and Dan Tony situation. Um, or, yeah, right. Mike Dan Tony. And they, they saying he could be a potential candidate for us, too. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind that, you know. Mike D'Antoni is a great coach. And I'm kind of glad he left the situation he was in, right? I told y'all we were going to address this when we got to him. He had a contract extension, right? He didn't want that. He left them, right? Look at that situation. You have two superstar, supposed superstars on your team. You got James Harden, which is a superstar, right? And Russell Wilson... 32 years old, still kind of a superstar, I guess you can want to say, but both have max contracts. Russell has three more years. James Harden has two, plus a player option. So basically three if he takes it. I don't think Mike D'Antoni wanted to deal with that lineup anymore. Like, I don't think he wanted, like, wanted to deal with being in that for three more years. Or let alone two of James Harden. I don't think he wanted to deal with that. They can't really win with James Harden. And they definitely not gonna win with Russell Westbrook. And it's gonna be hard for them to even find. If they wanted to trade Russell Westbrook, it's gonna be real, real hard, bro. Real hard, bro. For them to even find a trade for a 32-year-old Russell Westbrook on a max contract. Who just showed in the playoffs that he can't can't move for real, bro. Like, it's every playoffs Russell was doing this, bro. Has a tremendous season. Great. MVP season. Triple doubles and all of that. But when the playoffs come, it disappears. Like, I'm not hating on Russ or nothing like that, but damn. I'd rather they would have had Chris Paul. That was the closest they ever got to winning. But um, let's read what they said. They say the Chicago Bulls may have yet another head coaching candidate that could zero in on a former head coach or a Rockets head coach, Mike D'Antoni. So this is the biggest, you know, coaching news of the weekend. I saw it and I'm like, I'm not surprised. When I seen that he didn't sign his contract extension, I was not surprised that he didn't sign. Um, if I was a coach in the NBA, I wouldn't do it either. <laughs> Not with that team. It's just probably time to go somewhere else. I've been there a couple years. I see it's not working with James Harden. And then y'all brought Russell over here. That's definitely not going to work. I don't want to be stuck with that. And the fact that y'all going to have to find people to suit to buy Russell. I mean, to trade for Russell. That's going to be hard as fuck. Right? You might be able to, if you wanted to trade Harden, you might be able to do that. But even if you were to tra trade Harden, and it's just Russell Westbrook team. Oh, I, I, I still think Mike D'Antoni still wouldn't want to say. 
Russell does not win. Point blank period, my nigga. Um, Dan Tony was anticipated to be one of the bigger names on the coaching market this offseason and likelihood that he wasn't in the same position with the Rockets because a lot of people say he was going to get fired, but he just chose to walk away. He didn't want to be with that. Uh, could he be the name? Could he be a name that a team like the Chicago Bulls have ever said in the Sixers, Indiana Pacers, and etc. considered to be their next head coach? Yeah, one of them might take him. He's a great coach. Mike D'Antoni is a great coach, and he tried everything he could with the Rockets. So, look. Let's see. Um, is it forming a franchise ownership today that he's becoming a free agent and won't return to the Rockets? Yeah. And I, 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 I don't know why. For for some reason, I forgot coaches can do that. Like. Agents just like players. When they contracts are up, they can walk away too. Like, I don't know. I don't, for some reason, I forgot. I, I don't know. I never really thought that hard to like head coaching because most of the time they just get fired. <laughs> most of the time they get fired or they get a contract extension. But I mean, that's why this is big news for real because he just walked away. He didn't want to even get re signed or nothing. But, um, ooh. Oh, okay. This I'm gonna talk about like the career record. Everybody knows the career record in the regular season as a head coach sits at 672 wins and 527 losses, a 56 win percentage. And uh, his career in the playoffs sits at 54 and 56. That's tough. And that I, I feel like that's more due to you know what kind of just happened now and everything like that. But um. Let's get to the Bulls, man. Let's get to the Bulls. Now, nearly a month... <sighs> My bad. I almost had to break. Nearly a month into the coaching search since the Bulls officially parted ways with Boiling. Now, concentrate favorite has emerged in the process. The Bulls could be considered other candidates like former Thunder head coach Billy Donovan. Um, also, the assistant, lead assistant for the 76ers. Um, I, that, I don't want him. And then Kenny Atkinson, and then it's also Dan Craig. So, really, I would say those are the four best options. We have Kenny Atkinson, Dan Craig, Billy Donovan, and we could add Mike D'Antoni in the mix, but I don't know if that Mike D'Antoni would want to even come there with a bunch of young players. And, you know, it wouldn't be win now. You, 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 like, right off the rip, I know it wouldn't be win now. It's still player development needs to be done. So, and that'd be like, you know, a couple two to three years or like one to three years. I'm going to say one to three years for that to even get developed their own right track. So we need a coach that's going to be patient. I don't think Mike D'Antoni wants to waste two or three more years on another team that ain't winning now or going to be in the playoffs and do a deep playoff run. He wants to go to a team that's going through a deep playoff run. So I don't know, man. But this is going around um, that he can potentially, you know, add, be added to the coaching candidate list. Um, would I want to have him? I wouldn't mind having Mike D'Antoni. I wouldn't mind having Billy Donovan. I wouldn't mind having Dan Craig or Kenny Atkinson. We really have a bunch of good coaches, right? I don't see the other reason I hire those other guys. I mean, they, they want to hire the Nuggets assistant. But I would, the, the four guys I just named, I would rather take any of those four, right? Mainly Kenny Atkinson or Dan Craig. Dan Craig is the one sliding up for me, though, to be the number one. Because um, the, the Bulls want to do their own thing. They want to they want somebody who hasn't really been a head coach. You know, because that's why they've been looking at a bunch of assistants, too. Because before, Billy Donovan and Mike D'Antoni, they were looking at three, four assistant coaches and one head coach, which was Kenny Atkinson. So, really, the, the Bulls are looking to do, like, their own thing, make their own coach and develop their own coach, you know, Develop into, I mean, develop him into his role as a head coach while developing with the team, right? And that's why I think Dan Craig probably is the best suitor for the Bulls right now, bro. So whatever, I mean, let me know y'all comments. I mean, you know what y'all what y'all feel about that? You know, who, who y'all think we should get a head coach? Let me hurry up and get out this video, man. Zach Levine. This has been going around too. Um, the three Zach Levine trade packages with the Nets. For some reason, it's with the Nets. Um, I don't know if they thinking about really wanting to get rid of him, but this is rumor, right? So it's one of the more interesting names that has commonly speculated on so far this offseason surrounding his trade status and potential deals that could be made involve Chicago Bulls 25-year-old 6'6 shooting guard Zach Levine. With how much talent and the promise that Levine still brings to the table into his prime years in the NBA, there will obviously be a lot of suitors after him if the Bulls were openly shopping him. 
right? This is his prime year. Zach Levine is our best player on the team. Hands down. Um, I don't think they should trade him. Um, we're trying to get the fourth pick. Team still young because this is a prime year. So we got the prime Zach. We're going to get another pick. Um, yeah, I don't think we should trade him. I don't think we should trade him, but we just going to look at it, man. I ain't going to read all this. Y'all can read it yourself. Um, but we're going to look at it, man. We're going to see who they who they thinking about. Ah, Karis LeBurry. Jared Allen. Uh, Jared Allen would definitely have to come off the bench. But Karis LeBurry has been hooping. Has been hooping. This actually is a okay trade. Right? This is an okay trade because Jared Allen can be there just in case Wendell Carter, you know, gets injured because he tends to do, you know, get injured a lot. So back up for the most part, you know, or they can just fight it out for that position. You know, I still rock with Wendell Carter Jr. Um, Karis LeVert. That mean, you know, Karis LeVert has been showing out too when, when they returned to the bubble. Karis LeVert was hooping, bro. Like, he was hooping. And like I said, we, we in development stage, right? Eric LeVert can develop along with that team. You know, he's not all the way in his prime years yet, but he, he's getting up there, bro. Like, he is getting up there. And you can see Zach Levine over there, Kyrie Irving. Um, Kyrie Irving with Kevin Durant. And they low-key would be a super team at that point. Zach is a star, but he'd be the third option for sure. But I don't think he'd have a problem with that because Zach know he will have a deep playoff for him. So, I mean, that, that, that I actually kind of mess with that trade, bro. Um, this is prime years. He's 26. Uh, he's 26, so we could just let him let him walk, you know, and try to do our own little thing as far as our development. This could be the move. This could possibly be the move. Let's move on to number two, man. Bulls get Joe Harris, Karis LeVert. So, it's got to be Karis LeVert in here every time. I feel like Karis LeVert has to be in there every time. That we would get two unprotected first round picks. Um, and we get three point sniper Joe Harris. Hey. Oh no. That's a hey. If, if we get both of them in and, and, and some um, picks, I would be okay with that too. This one is low key nice too. You no know, sharp shooting on the inside of trade land. Hell yeah. You know, we can get Joe Harris. That'd be tough. That'd be tough, man. I'm not reading a whole bunch, man. Y'all go ahead and do your own little thing. Uh, Bulls trade with Nets for Levine. This is a three-team trade. So that, ooh, Lori? No, 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 no. No, I'm not messing with this one. Nope. No, 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 no. Okay, we do get rid of him. And whoever this weak guy is. But we get rid of Zach Levine. Oh, this is not, he's not even on our team. So we get rid of Zach Levine, Daddy Young, and Lori Market. We get Jared Allen. First round pick from the Nets and Drew Holiday. Um, nah, that's probably the worst trade. That's literally probably the worst trade. Um, so I agree with trade number one for the reason that I said more development. Jared Allen coming off the bench, most likely, or well, he'll probably start. I don't know what they would do in that situation if we got Jared Allen. Joe Harris would be cool too because we could have three. You know, a three-point shooting wing. So, they might let him start, depending on who we even get in the draft. And whoever we get in the draft can be behind Joe Harris a little bit. So, I, probably number two is the best trade. Let me know y'all thoughts down in the comment section, man. I'm going to go ahead and get into this video, man. If y'all want to check out the articles, make sure y'all go do that. Hope y'all enjoy the video. Your boy, out. Yeah, now we not lazy, we working. Yeah, you still want now we in Porsche. Yeah, I got gelato and sherbet. Yeah, I'm running check up. Yeah, yeah, I got pink rocks on Hawaiian, yeah, keep me a strong like I'm thinking, yeah.